welcome as commander of Hampstead American Legion. I'd like to welcome everyone today to remember. Remember our fallen once a year is not enough. The widows, widowers, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, and children remember every day. The empty seat at the table, the smaller gathering on Thanksgiving, and the voice of a loved one heard only as a distant memory in one's mind are constant reminders that they are gone. We owe it to the heroes that died and the loved ones left behind to make sure that their sacrifices are remembered and that their service to this nation will always be honored. Now, Ms. Cindy Miller will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Cindy. Our chaplain will lead us in prayer. Please uncover. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all victories, we thank thee for the opportunities which abide in our land. The guidance in the guidance in the power of uh, peril of the opportunities for uh, <laughs> I'm sorry thy tender love in times of need. Help us to remember with reverence the valor and devotion to the departed comrades, not only those whose bodies consecrate our country's soil, but also those who sleep beyond the seas, and the others whose resting places will not be known until the last day when the deep will have given up its dead. O oh God, teach us to honor them by ever cherishing the ideals for which they fought. Keep us steadfast in cause of human rights and liberties of law and order, and true Americanism. Give us the power to see and the will to do thy right. Grant that the American Legion may preserve the high ideals for which our comrades died. May thy peaceful blessing rest upon behind us. Keep us forever firm in your righteousness, humble of heart, and unselfish in purpose. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. <clears throat> I would like to introduce some of our guests today. Uh, Mayor Chris Nevin, would you please stand? <laughs> okay. Uh, our County Commissioner, uh, Haven Shoemaker. Our uh, Town Manager, uh, Brad Plate. You may be seen. You may be seen. 
Now this morning, uh, as our special guest, uh, I've asked our delegate of District 5, uh, Justin Reedy, to give his uh, speech for Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's a great um, privilege to be here, and I'm so impressed by the, the gathering, the turnout. I know it gets bigger every year. Thank you for being here to honor our fallen heroes. I'm, I'm very humbled to be asked to address this gathering to celebrate and commemorate Memorial Day. Ever since its official designation in 1868 by General John Logan of the Grand Army of the Republic, Memorial Day, or as it was originally known, Decoration Day, has served as a day of solemnity and reflection. Our Boy Scouts and many other groups continue the tradition each year of decorating graves of the fallen with American flags. In recent years, many national holidays like this one have become commercialized, uh, just taken as another extra day off, given special sales at department stores and car lots. Uh, but for, for many, millions of Americans, Memorial Day has remained, as it should always remain, a day to remember, to be thankful for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and to pray for the families and friends who have recently lost loved ones in the service to our nation. Since our nation's beginning, over one million brave men and women have given their lives to defend America and bring freedom to oppressed people all over the world. Here in Hampstead this morning, we gather at a memorial honoring fallen heroes from this town. Like those being honored in many other events happening all over our county and our, our nation today, these men and women probably did not think of themselves as heroes. They were simply doing their duty and serving the country that they loved. They fought for their homes and their families, and they fought for us. In 1917, Martin Treptow left his home in a, and his job as a small-town barber to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division of the U.S. Army. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy artillery fire. When his body was retrieved, medics found a diary. On the flyleaf, under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure, I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost, as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. And even though Martin was not a Hampstead resident, it's this kind of commitment and sacrifice that we are here to honor today. And that's shown by the people that we're honoring on this memorial. You know, our society's focus today is predominantly centered around the newest and the latest thing. We don't slow down very often, and what's old or traditional is often de-emphasized or marginalized or even made fun of. Mer Memorial Day is a clarion call to those of us, particularly in my generation, to stop and look at the sacrifice that made our nation great and the values that can keep us on that path if we choose to follow them. In 1787, as the negotiations between our founding fathers from all 13 colonies were taking place behind closed doors and in secrecy, a somewhat nosy socialite asked Benjamin Franklin about what type of government was being discussed. Is it a monarchy, she asked. Franklin replied, it's a republic if you can keep it. The, the men on this wall and the hundreds of Hampstead residents who have fought for our country throughout the years are the keepers of our republic. But you know, it's the job of all of us to remind future generations of the sacrifices that these keepers of our republic made. When I was a child, I remember be, there being a lot of concern that my, my generation would not really be willing to sacrifice or remember what was done on their behalf in World War II and the great battles of Korea and Vietnam. And that certainly changed as Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as other peacekeeping missions, have resulted in my generation's tasting loss, though certainly not to the degree of the, the, degree of the greatest generation of the 1940s. September 11, 2001 was a defining moment for me as it was for so many in my age group. The impact and aftermath of that day still reverberates in our nation as we still face loss of life. But as some hostilities and conflicts ratchet down, the need for Memorial Day grows. It's not simply another day off. It shouldn't just be a moment of silence in the middle of our busy schedule. It's a sacred occasion for all of us who've reaped the benefits of the shared sacrifice 
of millions of veterans and over a million who've given their life to be thankful. And this holiday is not just about the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who've died. It's the thousands of families who were affected as well and left behind. Let's never forget the, irrepar the irreparable loss of fathers, husbands, sons, and brothers from the past, and now mothers, wives, and daughters, and sisters as well. Memorial Day is also an opportunity to think about what our duty is to the fallen. What do we owe them? And I would not presume to put words in any of, of their mouths. But one thing I believe we do owe is the responsibility to work for a nation that will continue to be worthy of their sacrifice. We must never throw up our hands and say, that's it for me, when we face discouragement about the direction of our country. They fought to help us stay free. They fought to keep the republic. In turn, we must fight to keep it as well, through reaching out to our veterans and to the families who've lost loved ones. We must fight to keep it by showing the respect and honor that this sacrifice deserves. And the decision last year to add names to this memorial was a perfect example of how a community can honor this sacrifice. Of course, we pray that more names will not have to be added. But we know that in the course of our nation's future, it's very possible. This memorial will continue to serve as a rallying point for our community and for our generations to come. President Ronald Reagan said at Point du Hoc in Normandy, France, in a speech commemorating the 40th anniversary of D-Day, we will always remember, we will always be proud, we will always be prepared, so we may always be free. I thank you sincerely for the opportunity to share this occasion with you, and I pray that God will bless each of you here and the families of those who have given their lives for our country. May God continue to bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. I would like to read a poem that was found in the archives of the Post. It was published in a newsletter August in 2000. It's titled, Just Live Too Long. As I look out my window on this chilly Memorial Day, I, took, I look at the American flags flying on display. Some are tattered and worn, as though they had been at Omaha Beach. Some are hanging improperly but still they look so neat. I guess us World War vets have just lived too long. The, old, the glory in old glory is almost gone. They throw her on the ground and burn her in the street. Supreme Court says it's an expression of free speech. We carried her through World Wars one and two so proud were we of that red, white, and blue. So many sons and daughters made the supreme sacrifice. They gave her their bodies and, yes, their life. She was carried across the Pacific in Tojo land. It was on Mount Sarabashi that she made her stand. She traveled across the Atlantic in the ice, snow, and rain. She was flying high when she brought down Hitler's reign. Soon, there would be Korea, Vietnam, and Desert Storm. New pride in her was once again born. We fought for the freedom of people everywhere. So on Memorial Day, please show that you care. Just keep in mind, if you decide to throw her on the ground, a veteran might be nearby who would gladly take you down. Now they built us a monument that will be something to behold, but most World War II vets' bodies have long been cold. They say it's for future generations to know of our sacrifice, to be seen by those who gave so much would have been so nice. So come on, America, let's unite and become one to guard against missiles, which one day will surely come, to be united like we were during World War II, 
there's nothing in this world that America cannot do. God bless America. This poem was written by Conrad Sigmund Sr., U.S. Navy Armed Guard. He's a World War II veteran, and he's here today, and he's a member of Post 200. Would you please stand, Conrad? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we're going to have Cindy to sing a song called the Soldier Song. And she wrote this song herself, Cindy. I'd like to thank you for all the setting suns you've missed with your family and your friends and the holidays. And though we've never met, I need not see your face for your gift of service to our flag will always make me say, God bless the soldier whose job is never done. And it seems somehow when you come home, the real work's just begun. I will not turn my back on you. And when you hear me sing, it's because of your great sacrifice that our country still can say, let freedom ring. So I stand here today, and I hope that you can see that our country gives its thanks to you, and forever it will be. Yes, I stand here today, as humble as can be, and I thank the Lord that I was born in the land of the free and home of the brave. God bless America, God bless our soldiers, God bless America, God bless our soldiers, God bless you. Thank you, Cindy. Now, uh, Richard Hess, our past commander, I'd like him to come forward, and uh, he had a poem uh, he would like to read. And uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> the final inspection. The soldier stood and faced God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, soldier. How shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek? To my church have you been true? The soldier squared his shoulders and said, No, Lord, I guess I have not. Because those of us who carry guns can always be a saint. I've had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was tough. And sometimes I've been violent because the world is awfully rough. But I never took a penny that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime when the bills just got too steep. And I never passed a cry for help Though at times I shook with fear, and sometimes, God, forgive me, I've wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They never wanted me around except to calm their fears. If you've a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. 
I never expected or had too much. But if you don't, I'll understand. There was a silence all around the throne where the saints had often trod as the soldier waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, you soldier. You've borne your burdens well. Walk peacefully on heaven's streets. You've done your time in hell. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, now I ask the chaplain to pronounce the benediction. Eternal God, we thank thee for this hallowed soil. Make us worthy. We pray thee to guard our heritage of pride through all the years to come. In memory of all our dead veterans, may we pledge to our devoted land the same service and same devotion. And, O oh Lord, secure to us evermore the peace for which our comrades died. Amen. Amen. This concludes our program, and I would like uh, to thank everyone for attending, and I wish everybody a great day. We have a beautiful day for this. Thanks again for coming.